Welcome to our innovation challenge session. So this is uh, the session we've all been waiting for, an hour long opportunity to see some really exciting ideas in the rare disease space. Um, I wanted to open this session because I just wanted to thank the people involved. It's been such a beautiful example of teams collaborating together. Um, you know, as, we, as you all know, CRDN is a fairly small team and we've been able to, to do this work and to have this impact by working alongside the Eastern Academic Health Science Network. Um, back in 2020, at our Rare Fest event, they launched a survey, a survey for patients, for people living with rare diseases to share their everyday challenges. We make lots of assumptions in this world about what we think patients want and what they need. Um, we asked them, what do you want? And they came up with three very clear challenges. Those challenges have been shared um, with our innovation community. And I am gonna introduce Alex Lloyd, who is from the EAHSN, and he's gonna talk us through how this project has evolved. So welcome to all of the innovators today and to the judges, our dragons. Um, and over to you, Alex, thank you. Thanks, Joe. it's really, really kind of you. Um, so yeah, so um, I work at Eastern HSN and our, our purpose is, is really to turn great ideas into positive health impact. Uh, we were established and, and we're funded by the NHS uh, to convene all partners in the health sector to develop and deliver innovative solutions in health and care. And we cover the East of England, but we're part of a national network um, and that really helps us to scale up uh, what is proven to work and share what has worked in other areas. So thank you so much for joining uh, what I can honestly describe as a truly collaborative process, as Joe says. It's really brought together patients, advocates, experts, leaders to address the challenges faced by people who are affected by rare diseases. And today we're, we're taking our inspiration from a well-known BBC production. Uh, we're running a Dragon's Den for innovations in rare disease. Um, and today is the accumulation of a competitive process where innovators have submitted their solutions to us. Uh, these have been judged by our esteemed panel of expert dragons um, who you see before you. Um, and innovators were then invited to submit solutions um, that have been addressed that have addressed one or more of our challenge statements um, which were set out by the rare disease community and which focused on three things it was improving access and availability of clear reliable health information about rare diseases improving coordination of care for people living with rare diseases and maintaining well-being and reducing mental fatigue for people living with rare diseases we received a large number of innovation submissions and today the top five as selected by our dragons, will each pitch to you live. So after each five minute pitch, our dragons will have five minutes to post questions to the innovator. And you um, in the audience um, are also able to share your thoughts, your guidance, any offers of support via an interactive digital feedback form um, via a link which I will post into the chat. Um, and you can submit this form as many times as you like, simply select the appropriate innovation from the drop down menu, um, which is at the top of the form, complete and then su uh, click submit at the bottom. At the end of the five pitches, we'll offer you the opportunity to vote on the innovation which you feel best meets one or more of the three challenge statements set out by our rare disease community. It's not a competition, all five are very much winners. Um, and uh, after this uh, session, there'll be a live virtual networking event where you'll have the opportunity to meet and chat to our five innovators. So our five experts um, and esteemed dragons today are Louise Jopling, uh, the commercial director at Eastern AHSN, Alistair Kent, who's the co-chair of UK Rare Disease Policy Board, Sean Richardson, uh, the general manager of Alexion AstraZeneca in UK, Sophie Muir um, from the Timothy Syndrome Alliance and Dr. Gemma uh, Chandralake, who's CRDN chair and also the education and training lead for NHS East Genomics. I encourage you to read each of our Dragon's more detailed bios, which are available on the event website, as well as uh, via uh, the HSN booth, um, a, uh, a link to a document which details um, our five innovators. So, without further delay, we will move on to our first 
Innovator Pitch. Um, and I will post the link to the uh, survey you're able to uh, engage in via the chat. So our first innovator um, is Tony representing Acelpius Digital. Um, Acelpius Digital is a paediatric rare disease diagnostic portal with four really interesting component parts to improve collaboration and consultations. Tony, can I pass over to you please to share your screen? I am now posting in the chat with the link that you're able to use to share feedback. Excellent, thank you, Alex. Hopefully you can see my screen now. Yeah, excellent. So uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Alex and Joe, for the uh, shortlisting and invitation for the uh, uh, event today. We're really excited about what the, uh, the future holds with regards to early diagnosis with, uh, with rare diseases. Um, as, as, as part and parcel of the session today, we've pulled together a short deck which has been shared and we can share this out to the wider organisation and, and, and uh, participants in the session. Um, we're, we're really keen to focus on faster access to diagnosis and treatment. It's something that we've been focusing on now for around about 18 months. Um, our background as an organisation is very much one of technical transformation. Uh, within uh, organisations and verticals that make a meaningful difference. Um, <clears throat> excuse me one second, let me just jump slides. My slideware is failing me, uh, apologies. So um, we, when the company itself is Sundown Solutions that developed a Celpius um, digital as a platform. And as I've mentioned, we, we, we've, our, our, our efforts and focus are around making a meaningful change, but the technology that we develop and bring to market. Um, we, we work from the UK, we've got operations out in the US uh, that focus on certain aspects of delivery there in the rare disease community, which we can talk about and, and drill down on in, in this deck itself. Uh, but we're a socially responsible organization that invests in our people and uh, develops tools and, and products that uh, uh, tend to uh, address real market issues or, or vulnerabilities that we see. Selfies Digital itself has really been born out of uh, the last uh, 18 or two years of work that we've been undertaking with the Rares, Rare Disease Institute out in the US, uh, which has been a funded program from Takeda Pharmaceuticals and Microsoft. Uh, under the guise of World Health Organization focus to address the challenge that uh, many uh, nations are feeling at the moment in terms of uh, trying to drive down that early diagnosis in rare disease and utilizing technology and innovation in that space to facilitate that. We've developed uh, a number of components that help address that. First and foremost is uh, our innovative uh, platform that provides a meaningful way for consultants and referrers of uh, rare disease to communicate more effectively and efficiently. Um, and also uh, an app that allows um, them to be referred by doctors, healthcare professionals across their uh, sectors, uh, escalation via that process into a community environment that uh, allows uh, referral to be significantly quicker We've already seen benefit from this, whereby the rarest of diseases have been picked up by consultants that are accessing this portal and platform from thousands of miles away from the original designation consultation process. Um, this has all been brought together on a Microsoft technology stack because that's our background as, as, as an organization. But what we've also built into that is a triage portal that allows patients themselves to be triaged digitally over that platform and portal securely. And more importantly then, we've integrated that with another piece of technology that we've developed that is actually being utilized across the HSN at the moment um, and, and has been uh, uh, driven into wider community environments, which is our yellow bracelet product that allows for um, seamless access to medical care records via a QR code scan by a healthcare professional once they're registered. This basically mitigates any issues in terms of um, a, a person not being able to get relevant care or treatment for their uh, disease or have healthcare professionals access the relevant information pertaining to their current standing. All of this has been brought together now in one ecosystem. So we've got our app 
that provides specialist care and the consultants and their, their ability to share information securely. A portal that acts as a, a repository or, or almost a wiki as well of um, rare disease information and uh, care planning type activities that can be accessed by healthcare professionals. Um, and also the, the inclusion of our yellow bracelet technology that brings it all together and binds it like a, a secure glue for want of a better term. <clears throat> As I mentioned, the, um, the, the, the technology itself um, is, is, is built on standard Microsoft technology and utilizes another variant of this collaboration platform that we're currently utilizing today, which is Microsoft Teams as a means to enable um, use, use cases to be logged by clinicians and then treatment to be provided remotely. We understand and appreciate that those that specialize in these fields can be anywhere globally. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we've, we've adopted this method of creating the community base that people can access. Um, what this also then allows us to do though is provide a hook in to that patient care record and integrate it all through the ecosystem so that if that patient is going abroad or wherever, that QR code scan that they've got on a key ring or a bracelet will also enable a healthcare professional anywhere once they've been registered to access that patient care information should they need it. So it provides an element of additional uh, secure cover for that patient's requirements. You can see here on this slide the, uh, the, the, the type of capability that we've got. We've got a, a dashboard process that's been set up for um, cases to be logged and to be um, triaged by the, uh, the origin, originating healthcare professionals. They can then allocate them into a pool so that um, rare disease consultants can then access that and provide their own triage and input on um, best case. And um, this is also importantly, this is not just a, um, a POC that we're talking about. This is live now. So we've already delivered this um, with the support of Takeda into the Rare Disease Institute. We've got the infrastructure already set up within Nord in the US. And we've also got um, um, people from the Children's National Hospital with support from Dr. Marshall Sumner to actually support this out in the community. Tony, can I, um, apologies, call you to quits there because yeah. um, unfortunately you've gone over Sorry, five minutes. Yeah. Thank you so, <laughs> so much. If you're able to come out of presenter mode, please. That'd I be can do, yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very so much indeed. Much. Thank you. Um, so we'll now pass over to our, our judges. Um, and I'm sorry that the slides didn't quite work properly there. Digital and things sometimes go awry. Um, we'll arrange with Tony to be able to share his, his slides later. And as I say, um, we have a full summary of all the innovations that people are able to, answer, uh, able to view. Um, over to our judges. Uh, who would like to ask the, answer the uh, first question? I've got Sean with a virtual hand up and Alistair with a real life hand up. Um, can I take them in order? Sean, do you want to go first? That, was that the, the fastest finger there? Fastest <laughs> finger first. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Tony. Um, uh, and I appreciate trying to cover all that in five minutes is almost That's an impossible, impossible task. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, it, I think when you look at the challenge you've got here around coordination of care, getting earlier diagnosis, it does look there's uh, a very um, interesting um, sort of proposition you've got here. I think one of the things I'm really interested in is so you've got some experience of uh, utilizing this in, in the US. Mm -hmm. Just wondering from that experience um, and your learnings from that what would you either improve or do differently to make sure that the um that the, the, the sort of platform is successful for for the nhs in the uk it, the, the platform itself sean if i'm honest with you and great question it's not the platform that's the issue with anything like this it's the adoption and inclusion of those that are at the front end the people like yourselves on this bridge that are at the front end of delivering the care that we need to ensure that we've got a sufficient cohort group aligned to support the initial phases of delivery. Um, that was our greatest challenge, if I'm brutally honest with you. We had a great team at Central Core within 
National Children's Hospital of America uh, with Dr. Marshall Sumner leading that program for us. And it was getting the other cohort groups in the other centers of early disease and diagnostics that took, took time because at the, again, we were also delivering this at a time when COVID first hit. So we had a, a huge challenge there to actually get people on board. And we, 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 at one point, we actually just put the brakes on it ever so slightly so that we could then, you know, muster some refocus and drive forward. Uh, and, and that's now the, the, the big push now. So I would, I would say inclusion and making sure that we've got the right people involved at a, at a, at a, a diagnostic and also a referral perspective so that we can gain the greatest traction and benefit. Tony, we've got time for one more question. I'm sorry, Sophie. Um, if I come to you first next time, that's all right. Alistair, did you want to quickly ask the question? Yeah, very so quickly. About, about one minute, if that's all right. Thank you. Yeah, very quickly. I mean, I'm intrigued that you've got uh, a potential panel of clinicians able to identify rare diseases, which may who may be situated in various jurisdictions all around the world and identifiable patient data going into your system. How do you preserve patient confidentiality in that and ensure that the data is, you know, is, is not misused? Great, great question. Really, really quick response, please. Tell yeah, we, we, have, we, have our, we have our own security mechanisms that we apply. Everything that we've delivered so far is fully HIPAA compliant as well. So we've already crossed that bridge and a lot of our technology is also Align, aligning with the regulations and data vaulting within country as well. So we, th th there's a lot of thought that goes into that, Alistair, for sure. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank really, you. really fantastic. And thank you, uh, judges. No, thank uh, you, no everybody. Um, so next we have um, a, a presentation piece uh, with Medwise uh, AI. Um, so Medwise um, provide healthcare professionals with vetted and contextualized knowledge about the treatment of management of rare diseases. Keith, over to you. You have five minutes. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. And thank you, everyone. Pleasure to be uh, in this Dragon's Den. Uh, so I'm Keith, uh, CEO and co-founder of Medwise, and we use AI to provide instant clinical answers for healthcare professionals. So when I was a medical doctor, I was just like him. I used to do night shifts in the middle of the night. At 2 a.m., I'll have to make decisions for patients. And oftentimes, I'd struggle to find the information I need to make the best decisions for patients. And out of desperation, I'll just Google for, for answers. So, so why are doctors Googling? Uh, with 6 million biomedical journal articles published every year, clinical knowledge is growing exponentially and it's just impossible for us to keep up to date. A systematic review published in JAMA shows that 50% of clinical questions are abandoned at the point of care. And without the right information, clinicians may default to their old ways of doing things and giving rise to a lack of adoption of best practice care, which is estimated to cost the UK £5 billion per year. And the problem is even more pronounced in rare diseases. So rare diseases is actually not that rare when uh, 7,000 rare diseases counted collectively, there are 400 million patients worldwide. So if you, you're not a specialist treating rare disease and non-specialist clinician will still see people with rare diseases. However, clinicians are just not familiar with them. In a paper published actually just two weeks ago, it showed that non-specialists, 95% um, of these clinicians perceive their knowledge about rare disease to be insufficient and less than 5% feel prepared to take care of for patients with rare diseases. Um, so at MedWise, we've built a disease agnostic search platform that can aggregate trustworthy evidence-based information and guidance all in one place and use AI to extract and provide answers to clinicians nearly instantly at the point of care. As a clinician, you can just go to our website on mobile or desktop, type in your question or keyword, click enter, and then our AI will do the work for you. You can see a list of most relevant bite-sized information with the source and date clearly listed. And our platform and AI will continue to improve based on user interactions and data. And a big additional benefit of our platform for rare diseases is that for the first time, we'll have real-time access to what questions or queries clinicians are asking. And this could be used to better understand what are the educational needs uh, around rare diseases. So in a uh, pilot funded by Innovate UK grants, 
independent evaluation of our COVID-19 platform have showed estimated average time saving of 2.6 minutes per patient contact and health economic modeling show productivity saving of up to 20 million when our solution uh, is adopted nationally. And this is only in one disease area. So we have received very positive feedback from clinicians and have since then developed a platform to be scalable into any disease area and any care setting for all clinicians. So our traditional competitors are kind of big publishers, though they actually exacerbate the problem by creating more content and just pushing it onto clinicians. They have very low customizability to respond to local needs and have very poor search. On the other hand, uh, Google is the best search in the world, but it is not tailored for clinicians of rare disease use case and it's not customizable. So we're the best in terms of having a great search and customizability for the use case. So uh, we are the right team to do this. I'm a medical doctor, but I've also been a management consultant and product manager, having delivered the productivity saving to the NHS. And my co-founder, Louise, was previously um, CTO and co-founder at Bloomsbury AI, a leading AI company, that, which, which was bought by Facebook. And he also holds 10 international patents. We're supported by very strong advisors and um, a lot of partners and supporters, including uh, Eastern Academic Health Science Network. Um, and what we would love to talk to uh, partner organizations to see how we can pilot our solution in rare diseases to support clinicians so that they can uh, better um, <clears throat> take care of patients with rare diseases. So we're MetWise. We provide instant clinical answers for healthcare professionals. Here are, are my details and feel free to reach out if you want to have a chat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keith. Um, so Keith, your details are there um, and very happy to share them afterwards as well and post them in the chat. Are you happy to uh, unshare your screen now, please? Um, yep. Thank you so much. I'll be honest, Sophie, you missed out last time and I'm gonna pass over to you now to ask the first question, if that's all right. Thank you so much. Are you on mute or are you? I was, I, am I still on mute? No, we can hear you very clearly now. Thank you. Um, everyone's turned to go, Dr. Google in their time. I was wondering if um, the software that you've got will signpost um, the, uh, the relevant people to the support groups and the communities um, that the rare disease, um, as soon as you find out you've got a diagnosis, that's really um, the, the community that you're looking at. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we can uh, work with our partners to understand what are the sources or information that would be helpful to uh, both patients and, and clinicians and then incorporate it onto our platform. Fantastic. Thank you, Keith. I'm going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, Gemma, do you want to go next? Um, and then finally, Louise, if that's all right. Thank you. Yeah, I was just um, interested to know how you um, drive adoption with clinicians. Is it a subscription based model that trusts buy into or how do you get clinicians to use the platform? Yeah, so uh, for we already have a primary care version of the platform that is freely available. Um, so that's how we get initial adoption. We then work with organizations that um, would love to kind of tailor and customize the platform for their uh, specific group of users. Um, so we charge a uh, subscription fee for per, per user. Thank you very much, Keith. And uh, Louise, over to you. Thank you. Hi, Keith. Um, and I was just reflecting on the previous presentation as well. And I think this is something that I've uh, figured from many of the innovators that you're going to hear about this afternoon. And just wondering if Medwise and Sundown might uh, look to be collaborating in that um, uh, accurate and appropriate provision of information. I can see Tony nodding, but I'll, I, it was directed to you, Keith. Uh, yes, absolutely. I think we are a software and AI platform, and we would love to partner with people who have worked in the rare disease space um, to give us the uh, <clears throat> context and what are the 
good content sources and how best we could provide the information. So absolutely would love to have a chat with Tony as well. Sure. Fantastic. Winning link made in the first few minutes. Thank you so, so much for that. Thank you, um, Louise, Sophie, and Gemma for those fantastic questions. Um, thank you, Keith, for a fantastic presentation. A reminder that the survey link is in the chat um, and um, please do fill it out. It only takes a couple of seconds. It's uh, tick boxes um, and then a small box at the bottom to add any feedback comments, thoughts, or offers of support. Um, so moving swiftly on, um, as we do in Dragon's Den, uh, to our third presentation, um, which is from Liam um, and is Noink by DSST. Um, so Noink is a real world data capture and information system for rare disease patients and their families to improve care. It's a tool for rare disease families to diarise their conditions for the benefit of themselves and their clinicians. Um, so over to you, Liam, if that's all right, please. Hello, thank, thank you there. Yeah, uh, I'm going to keep my camera off while I'm doing the presentation because it's not that I'm not looking people in the eye, it's just my camera is slightly off center. Um, thanks for that. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm conscious of time, so I'll rush through this as quick as I can. So um, my name is Liam. Please, Hingham. I'm please, the... please don't worry about rushing, Liam. You've, you've got a full <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> Great. Five minutes. It's, it's a lot. Of, it's not a lot of time, but I'm Liam Houlihan, the founder and CTO of DS, a founder and the CTO of DSST, and we're the makers of Noink. It's pronounced Noink. It's my outrageous Irish accent. So it's 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 um, as you can tell by the name of the platform, we're trying to replace pen and paper in the management of rare disease, particularly for families. Um, so what is Noink? So Noink is a real world data capture platform to help manage any rare condition. So I mean, actually that bears repeating, I would say. I'm, we're saying any rare condition. So I know some people say there's 4,000, some people say there's 7,000 uh, rare diseases. We're, we're working to solve the harder data capture plat uh, problems for all rare disease families everywhere. So um, Noink, it captures uh, relevant disease specific data. So, I mean, why do we concentrate on data capture? Well, we believe that real world data has clinical and scientific value. And to be brutally honest, largely overlooked in the professional delivery of complex care. Um, we're here to change this. We allow our patients or their loved ones, yes, it is multi-user, uh, to collect structured data and deliver it to where it helps most, for patients to help themselves, their doctors, researchers, or industry. And we know that capturing data can be an onerous task. Uh, that's why a platform has to provide a lot of extra utility, which ultimately saves rare disease families time by keeping them organized. So we also deliver educational content, uh, educational content and signposting in a, that is contextual to what they're doing on the platform. And we do this via hyper-localization, which I can talk about later. And, and as, as I said, this is for all rare diseases. And for any, anyone in the audience that has, has a rare disease, they know we may have to rely on orphan drugs, but they shouldn't have to rely on orphan technology. So what NOI can record anything, uh, be that units of measure like milligrams, durations of events, images, videos, pictograms, to name but a few. And all this data can be dashboarded and shared with a doctor or researcher or industry at any time. And I should point out the patient owns the data and the patient owns the data and decides who gets it. So what are the problems that we are trying to solve today in healthcare? I mean, I would say healthcare data is fragmented, siloed, and I would say incomplete. I mean, and th there are systemic uh, inefficiencies that are, I, I believe are unsustainable. I mean, we all know of the rare diseases aside, we know the demographic pressures that the NHS are, uh, are under, and we are looking at this long term. Um, I'm sure everyone is aware, everyone in this audience is aware of the 3.5 million uh, people in the UK living with a rare disease and the limited care pathways, and, and it's an expensive care burden. 
Um, again, our belief is that real world patient data has untapped clinical and scientific value that we want to use to improve rare disease care. Um, the 21st Century Cures Act in the US, for example, attempts to address this, and it only really strengthens our belief that patient data has a place in the treatment of rare diseases. And as I said, we can help with any rare disease, but healthcare delivery is condition centric. So we address patient comorbidity, allowing doctors to treat the whole patient, not pigeon them in, pigeonhole them into a set of typical known systems. So I mean, zebras don't present in a typical manner, and I'm sure rare disease families would understand what that means. I mean, and we also believe that simply providing a platform to record data is not enough. We come from a background of very complex care, and we know that technology must also provide families with utility. And the utility functions we think of as ultimately to save rare disease families time and educate them where possible. So as, as we believe that with utility comes adherence and better self-management. And again, I would say it's worth saying that we do not monetize patient data. Um, Noink is not a social media platform. We are not in the business of harvesting eyeballs for marketing opportunities. I'm sure a lot of people in the audience are thinking, not another app for rare disease. Uh, remember, we're, we're trying to solve this for any and all rare diseases. So Noink is a platform, not an app. And we see many problems with mHealth uh, M -Health apps, so we, we took a different approach. Um, fundamentally, we believe that mHealth apps are not clinical enough for doctors and researchers, and clinical systems are not available to rare disease families. So what we are doing is we're trying to bridge what we call this sort of technology efficacy gap between, between these two people. These, um, and we have done this by capturing all the data it's structured. So we, it's SNOMED and ICD-11, and if clinicians would probably understand that. And we have also, um, we, we have abstracted data capture from underlying conditions, which means that we can do any rare condition. Uh, so Liam, no, after telling you that you didn't need to rush, uh, yes, okay. we've now run out of time. I'm so sorry. Um, if I've you're probably got to... about within a minute. It cuts down the questions, but absolutely, if you want to continue, yeah. that's fantastic. Okay, so um, by multilingual, it's not French version. It's not a Spanish version. We have that, but because it's structured data, you can record in one language and a doctor or researcher can see it in another and um, infinitely extendable. So what you see is not all you get. Uh, it, we can extend it to be to cater for the unique circumstances of any particular patient. And I will not say how it helps. I think the benefits are pretty obvious. Um, for patients, it allows them to diarize their conditions in a structured, scientific, and objective manner. And it we would say it helps with their, with their clinician relationship. For clinicians, you're getting real-time streams of medically clinically usable data for industry you have you have uh, i would say it, it will help a lot in observational studies and clinical trials etc and on that note Thank there's um, all i would say is every screen you've seen is the platform in action and that's it Fantastic. Thank you so much, Liam. If you're able to stop sharing your screen, please, that'd be fantastically useful. And I will pass over to Alistair for the first question, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Liam. Um, very interesting. Uh, I'm uh, intrigued by your emphasis on capturing all relevant data. Uh, and the question I would ask of you is, who decides what's relevant, given that many rare diseases are still currently poorly characterized and little understood uh, by clinicians? Um, what we, we do that by creating, we ask, we ask a question to many groups of people. So um, we take the position that if you have the ability to record anything, as a clinician, what would you like recorded by your patients that will help you deliver care? And we ask the same question to patients saying, what do you record that helps you in your life, in your daily lives or helps you with coordination of care? And those type of questions, they become input items in data, in the data entry. And it's, it's structured. Um, what I would say, for example, the way we've abstracted data is one disease may be recording a seizure. And in reality, what you're recording is who, when, where, and how long. An asthma attack is recording who, when, where, and how long. It just happens to be called asthma attack. So that's how we've, the underlying data is structured and it's language independent. And the underlying data is SNOMED. 
fantastic thank you if i pass on to sean for the next question please yeah thank, thank you liam uh, again looks uh, uh look it really will be taking on one of the biggest challenges i think we know there's so much data which is uh, out there but it's not captured in any structured way and i think that's the phrase which kept coming through from 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 the presentation i think when we look at rare diseases, I think Alistair touched on, on part of it is what information is being captured, but it's also the fact that for many ultra rare diseases, there might only be a handful of patients in the UK. So what's the ability to expand this outside of the UK into other countries so you really get meaningful data from a much larger population in, in very, very rare conditions? Um, and, Liam, we, and Liam, you've got 30 seconds to answer this one, please. Okay, we, we're, lo we're location agnostic. We have 13 languages. So if someone, if, if a Spanish speaker has the same rare disease, they can input their data in Spanish and the underlying SNOMED, et cetera, comes out in English. Or So it's, we, language is not a barrier for, so the cohort were language independent up to 13 languages. And it, yeah, so it's, on, it's fire compliant. So we, we, we have, as I'm saying, we're trying, we're trying to make M Health apps more clinical. <laughs> Thank so thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. Thank you, Liam, for the presentation. I appreciate how hard it is to get the message across in five minutes, isn't it? Yes. Um, there's actually been two fantastic questions put in the Q&A um, from Paula and Emily. Um, and Liam, I'm sure you can view those. If you're able to answer live, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, if not, uh, I know you'll be in the networking afterwards. Yeah, and, um, I, I can answer, I can answer those people. and let you get on to the next, next, next presentation. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so, yeah. so much. So yeah. third in our presentations, we have Shane with Thriving AI, which is the tool that integrates health and social care, formal and informal care around a thriver, which is the person being cared for, and underpinned by machine learning and AI capabilities. So Shane, over to you. If you're happy to share your uh, screen, please. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. I'm Shane, founder and CEO of Thriving AI, a super app for caregiving and support. Caregiving is siloed and fragmented. It's stressful to coordinate, communicate, and monitor. And it creates a lot of loneliness and isolation, not having access to the right data and information. And there are new technologies out today that could help this process. We need an integrated care system. Meet Sam. Sam is 15 years old, often feels lonely. He can operate independently and wants to engage fully with others and could with support. Leslie, Sam's mom, is worried and always juggling many things, family, work, care. She needs a less stressful and more seamless application to help her. Maria, the nurse, has a heavy patient load and often com complains of the fact that admin time digs into really important caregiving time. Many institutionals and schools are really critical deliverers of support and care to people suffering from rare diseases and often they're left out of the system. So taking all these pain points into account, we've built Thriving AI which brings healthcare, social care, formal care, and informal care together around the thriver, so it's inclusive. And it's underpinned by machine learning and data, which helps provide the data required to make better caregiving decisions. So how does it work? Sam is on the platform. On it, he has a circle of care, which has his parents, perhaps grandma, and others involved in his care. Sam checks in every day at a customized time and lets people know how he's feeling. He gets an acknowledgement and an inspirational quote to help him with his day. He has access to information and content and access to communication. This is support and help in his pocket whenever he needs it. Leslie is also on the platform with her circle of care in which Sam exists. Leslie has access to all the admin functions so that she can monitor who gets added to the circle, when the check-ins are, etc. She also has access to the mood dashboard so she can see Sam's operating functionally 
over a period of time and pick up on the small things before they become big. She also has access to curated content, products and services and communication. Maria, the community nurse or social worker, has all her thrivers on her app and therefore is part of many circles. She has access to all of the front end functions and the admin functions, but additionally, she has access to back end functions that give her access to data analytics that can help her with scheduling, with route mapping, and just generally how her patients are performing. Residential institutions can also be added to the platform as desired and required. We have spent over two years doing focus groups, interviews, building prototypes to get to this point. Just to share, when we did our latest prototype, we had 92 users, 52 users that actually downloaded and used it, 33 consistently. When we did our survey recently with 145 senior thrivers, 38% said that the app was very relevant or relevant. Of the 263 caregivers, 63% said that it was very relevant or relevant. Top comment was simple and easy to use. Four out of five budget holders said, if we proved adoption, they would pay for it. Today, there are many apps on the market, but to get a holistic and inclusive feel, you have to go to four or five applications. None of the people we talked to wanted to do that. So we're on a mission to simplify it and bring the critical things in one app in one place. We've been very fortunate to win competitions, to get mentoring, investment, and prize money. And we're at a place right now when we are just going to market at the beginning of October. We have three pilots planned for November and we're actively looking for trusts, local authorities, families and caregivers to talk to, to help us improve what we've built and look at its utility. Our team is very talented and skilled, but most importantly, each one of us is a caregiver. And so we have a firsthand experience. We'd love to talk to you. Please seek us out either by email or in the networking session. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Shane. Fantastic presentation. And I will pass over to our first question, if there are any. Um, was that uh, apologies, Alistair? Thank you so much. Pass over to you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, obviously, when you're um, a parent or a, uh, a patient, or an individual with a rare disease, uh, an awful lot of, uh, in, in an awful lot of cases, much of your life is uh, focuses around uh, the sort of medical management of, of your condition. Does your app, your, your app doesn't allow access to clinical information, does it? Uh, or have I misunderstood? Yes. You're absolutely right, Alistair. Our app is really patient management and care management. What we have on our roadmap is to tie into electronic medical records and clinical records, but we will integrate with someone else. We don't want to get into writing that part of the application. What we do have is the ability for groups. So clinical groups can create their own little group for VoIP or uh, messaging and texting and calls. And that is uh, GDPR compliant and HIPAA compliant. Thank you. Fantastic, thanks Shane. And really interesting, it's always interesting to hear about alternatives that are on the market because obviously there are always different solutions out there. And Alan has pointed out that there's a similar project, uh, something called Rare Project by Same But Different. Um, and, uh, and so Shane, uh, you may want to talk to Alan afterwards if he's got experience of working with that, thank you. Um, do we have any more questions for Shane? Um, if not, obviously be available afterwards in the, uh, the live networking um, and please do complete the, uh, uh, the, the feedback form. Um, 
Joe, you've mentioned there's a question in the chat. Apologies, do you want to come straight in with it, please? I can ask Go it if you want. <laughs> This is yeah. a question asking, um, somebody's asking, I would be interested to know how accessible some of these technologies are. So, you know, can we give that question to Shane? Uh, sure. Uh, we, we've done a lot of work with seniors on this as a as the sort of test bed. And so we had to make it very simple and usable. And interestingly enough, our first prototype was something that we thought they would like and where we've ended up is quite different uh, in its simplicity and vibrancy and so forth. Uh, and also how we communicate it, trying to sort of use language that is not so jargon driven. I'm on mute now, thank you very much. And Gemma, one more question. We've got about a minute left, if that's all right. Yeah, no, it was just picking up on um, a question that Asda asked really. I mean, I think one thing that we've sort of started to see the pandemic is the ability for patients to have more than one carer in a conversation at once um, and that how that helpful that's been. So more than one healthcare professional, so, that, you know, to drive that coordination of care. And it looks like your platform potentially has the potential to do that, but obviously, yeah. Yes, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. Um, a number of uh, integrated care services the CCGs uh, coming into integrated care services are very interested for that reason, and particularly for rural um, patients, because that way they can track them, they can also track time traveling, et cetera, and therefore use that data to actually adequately pay people for the services that they're providing. Fantastic, thank you, Shane. Thank you. Fantastic. We're now going to move into our final presentation, which is Zan with Vitally Collaborative Decision Making, which is the tool for healthcare professionals to embed in an interoperable platform on top of video conferencing, image sharing and other health information exchange functionalities. So Zan, over to you if you're happy to share your screen, please. Great. Thank you very much for this introduction. Alex, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so yes, hello again. Um, I'm Zen, I'm UK market leader Parsec. Uh, and in our company, we believe that everyone deserves a chance to live a longer and more fulfilling life. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to present how we can combine digital technology and AI clinical applications to achieve equal outcomes for people um, living with rare cancer space and on a case of a malignant uh, mesothelioma. Um, so malignant mesothelioma is a rare and deadly form of cancer. It affects the pleural tissue surrounding the outside of the lungs and is due to the inhalation of asbestos fiber. Um, the use of asbestos products was banned 20 years ago, but the subsequent development of this disease lasts approximately 30 to 40 years. Hence, it's most likely to reach its peak incidence in the UK right now. There are around 2,700 new mesothelioma cases in the UK each year, and the average life expectancy for most diagnosed patients is only nine and a half months. That's why early diagnosis means more effective treatment and a much more positive survival prognosis. Due to its rarity, medical centers in local areas have limited expertise in managing mesothelioma patients, which can cause large variations in the quality of care. But furthermore, Population screening pro programs are often not in place, so most of the cases are discovered in an advanced stage. So also the British Thoracic Society guidelines suggest that diagnostic decision making in the case of mesothelioma should be delivered in regional multidisciplinary team meetings called MDTs. They promote the involvement of best experts regardless of their location to improve health outcomes of patients and decide upon the best possible treatment for all referred cancer patients. Yet, if the regional entity process is not supported properly and there is no standardized framework in place, the decision making can be labor intensive, time consuming and error prone. So due to increasing workloads and limited capacities, radiologists also present a serious bottleneck in making cycles while time is of great essence for these patients. The complex situation calls for a streamlined collaboration framework that helps clinicians improve patient outcomes faster, and which is also stated in the strategy of Cancer Alliance's MDNHS long-term plan. So with this project, we aim to establish an AI-supported virtual MDT for all patients with mesothelioma in the region to provide high-quality care in the shortest time possible. 
vitally supports secure and standardized medical information exchange between different hospitals based on standards such as FHIR and IHE, but also it provides all members with complete and up-to-date access to patient data such as DICOMS and other medical documentation for further review and discussion. Vitaly also streamlines the process so MDT participants exactly know when and how to contribute and use their precious time more effectively, regardless of where they are located. Integrated with AI image analysis capability, which picks up abnormalities around the lungs, the solution serves as a valuable insight that helps radiologists provide a quicker and more accurate diagnosis. In terms of estimated benefits, based on extensive research of UK scientific studies on the potential of regional virtual MDTs for mesothelioma patients, we estimate that using our solution, the median overall survival can increase from nine and a half months to 13 months, and the five-year survival rate from six and a half percent to 7.2 percent, thus saving two precious lives per year in your region due to faster diagnosis, getting the right treatment, and more options to include patients into clinical trials. We also predict that the approach will provide NHS significant cost savings by supporting more efficient use of clinicians' time due to streamlined workflows, remote presence, and of course, digital data exchange. So why participate with us? Um, here are some additional advantages of working with us compared to our competitors. The platform can be applied in any disease area and is fully configurable with other rare and also common diseases that require a multidisciplinary approach, such as lung cancer, MDT, for example. It provides AI clinical decision supports to help radiologists save time when making tough decisions, and of course, by connecting best experts in the region remotely for faster diagnosis and treatment in a timely manner. Besides, we have also a strong footprint in the field of oncology in the UK and the Netherlands with established regional urology MDT in the central Netherlands. In addition, our partners AI supported lung nodule screening application is already present and accepted in 50 hospitals in the EU. But to conclude, we would like to get the opportunity to embed Vitaly um, in one of your regions to validate um, the value of our innovation of, and of course to spread it um, out to other rare diseases and more common cancer pathways, such as lung cancer, for example. Thank you for your time and looking forward to your questions. Thank you, Sam. And it's always fascinating to see how you can take an innovation from one vertical, from one area, um, and make it available um, to, to a wider range of patients. So thank you so much for that. It's, it's really enlightening. Um, can we move on to our first question, which is, appears to be Sean and then Alistair. Um, Sean, do you want to go first? Thank yeah, th thank you. Uh, thank you, Sam. That was, uh, again, another uh, fantastic innovation that's been presented. I think, um, obviously, this is focused on, on um, lung cancer. And I think what when you think about rare disease, what's uh, really obvious is that the um, complexity of care, and, and there are so many different uh, healthcare professionals who are involved in care quite often at different locations as well. Um, and when I looked at the tool, I thought, yeah, th this would certainly help with some very complex MDTs. One of the things which I wasn't clear about was uh, for the technology, is it that everyone has to join live for that? Or is it able to have sort of uh, sequential conversation? So three or four people could get together uh, start a debate and then someone could join in let's say you know half an hour later when the, that original concert so it's a, a continuous MDT because coordinating time usually is the, the biggest downfall. Yeah absolutely so as part of the solution there is also a functionality where you can organize the agenda but most importantly we, we don't we don't focus on the actual facilitation of the MDT, but mostly on the effective management of MDTs. So based on the conversations we had with clinicians and other healthcare professionals, the most important part is the prep sessions. So when they would have access to all of the relevant medical information, so DICOM images, lab reports, and other documentation. So they would be able to prepare um, themselves even prior to the meeting, they would be able to add comments, uh, right? So after they would have a meeting, they could just join for this particular time, but most importantly, we would then produce a final report, which will then include, include all the diagnostics. This report could be, uh, could be then published back to the EPR, so it would be then um, available to other uh, healthcare professionals within the circle as well. Yeah, Thank you. Can. And a final question from Alistair, if that's all right, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah, very, Thank you. Very quick one. I mean, um, an interesting um, idea for bringing people together, but of course, 
the NHS uses a variety of different uh, IT systems, not all of which talk to each other, not all of which are, you know, Windows 11 compliant. How, how does your uh, system, how will it cope with the sort of diversity of systems currently in use in the NHS? So our solution is a web-based solution. So as long as you have a web browser and you would be able to hit the URL, so which means you would need to have a, uh, let's say, a working internet connection, you would be able to use our, our solution. On the other side, uh, from the integrational perspective, we would rely on standards such as IHE or FHIR to exchange medical relevant documentation. So for example, we would be able to integrate with the PAX repository or VNA to get videos or DICOMs or XDS repository to get other relevant uh, documentation, also structured data. Thank you very, Thank you. very much for that. It's fantastic. And a reminder to everyone, um, please do continue to fill out our uh, digital engagement forms, which I've been uh, putting the link for in the chat. Uh, the same form can be used for each innovator, and we will share all feedback back with the individual innovators um, as appropriate, um, which is obviously really important and valuable to them. Um, in, including any opportunities and offers for making contact. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm now going to pass on to Joe quickly to run our poll, and then finally Louise for um, summing up. If that's all right, please, Joe. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry, Joe. All right. <laughs> poll coming up. So I just want to remind people what you're voting on here. So when we asked our patients and families what were the challenges, the three things that they said were how can we provide reliable and accessible clear health information? How can we um, improve coordination of care? And how can we help to reduce mental fatigue? So they're the three challenge statements that we provided to the innovators. We want to know from you in the poll, how did they do? So which solution do you feel best addressed one or more of the challenges set by our rare disease community? And if you could select your chosen solution and a reminder the poll is in the bottom bar isn't it joe yeah okay. i'm launching that now <laughs> that would help <clears throat> fantastic thank you and as people are completing that um lou can i pass over to you please um to to sum up our session and, and and really just to share your thoughts if that's all right please thank you very very much sure thanks alex thanks everyone and i was noting i couldn't i couldn't click on one of those uh, icons but anyway that makes it fair all round but no first of all just just in the final minute i just want to thank the cambridge rare disease network um for the partnership in bringing this event to you. As Joe said at the start, it's the culmination of a good couple of years of building the, the insights from the community and then translating those into the challenge statements that you're all um, answering. I think all of the innovators, so not just the five that you've heard from today, but all of the 17 applications that, that we uh, received that will also be looking as an organization to, to support on their journey to support the rare disease community. The judges and you, the audience, for some fantastic questions. Um, I think we heard it's all about data, 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 not just more data, but actual seamless integration for that end user, whether it's the, the patient, the carer, the multidisciplinary team, um, and about access to these technologies. So I'm sure in the networking, you're going to be um, interrogating our innovators to how can you get your hands on this this afternoon um, so yeah that's just a final plea to say do join the networking and also attend the the booths uh, go ask those questions and i look forward um, for eastern ahsn and members of yourselves and the uh, crdn um, to be able to update you on how the innovators you've heard from today have really move forward and future progress. So thanks for your attention. Thank you, Lou. I think we um, can end the poll there. It looks like everybody has voted. So congratulations there to everybody who took part because they were all excellent contributions and the five that were selected, so all winners, as we said. Um, but the public vote here today was for Medwise AI. So congratulations.
Um, is Keith there? Yeah, wow, thank you. I was not expecting that. So uh, I would like to congratulate all, all the other uh, speakers as well. I think those are fabulous pitches and look forward to some potential collaborations as well. Excellent. So at the end of this session now, we're moving again into the Remo networking if you want to join us there. Um, the innovators are going to also join in those sessions, so an opportunity to chat with them further. Um, if you don't want to join networking, please have a browse around the exhibition stand. Visit the EAHSN stand where you can find the documents relating to the pitches. And um, I think make a cup of tea. It's half one. It's time for a brew. So um, take some time out and we'll see you back later for the next session. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Thanks Dragons.